Hey there, Shortcuts. Steven here with a new list of soul, jazz, blues, and some reggae. So it's Monday. This list will come out on Wednesday at 9 p.m. as always. Welcome any questions or comments. I was curious as to what you all make of it. I'm just off watching episode eight of Succession. There's Tom and Greg making some tomlets. I'm still coming down. What an episode of TV. But ah, I get to have a chat about some vinyl. So that's a good thing. I tell you what, this is, um, you know, in the past, I've kind of been guilty of some of my lists being a little bit male focused. I'm telling you. Tonight, tonight it's different. So let's start with three. Oh my gosh, well there's maybe more than three female records in a row. This is The Supremes, Mary Wilson, Florence Ballard, and of course, Diana Ross. This is their second album on the Tamla Motown label. Where Did Our Love Go and Baby Love being two of the three number one hits in the US Billboard charts that came off this record. In fact, this record had three number ones. The very first album in the history of the Billboard charts to have three number ones. This record is amazing. It's mono. Um... It has a range of legends on it, from Smokey Robinson to the Four Tops, of course, the Supremes themselves. It's playful, funny, there isn't a single dud. It's only 30 minutes long. It's magnificent. Um, arguably the peak of the uh, Supremes' career. And I think, I think you could arguably say that... The magnificently named Who Is This Bitch Anyway by Marlena Shaw. Arguably, this is also her creative peak. What I love about this record, I'm just going to take it out. This is also on the Blue Note label. This was by far and away her biggest success on the Blue Note label. But can you see, it's an unusual Blue Note label um i'm gonna dig a bit more into this but it's a stereo record it's kind of um kind of a, a, a tries kind of walks a line between soul funk and and kind of almost a little bit of disco at times not but not quite the opening side is where the action's at, as far as I'm concerned, especially the first track, which begins as a top track, where, Mar where Marlena Shaw play plays the character of, let's call her a lady of the night. And the producer of the record plays um, someone who, over a period of short conversation, figures out exactly who she is and what she's about. It leads into an incredibly funky jam, um, you, me, and Ethel. Um, it's worth price of entry alone, but it's also, yeah, it's a really well-regarded record. Um, read the reviews, give it a listen. Um, I also have this, Sunshine of Your Love, 1969, live Ella Fitzgerald singing more kind of contemporary hits of the day. I've never had it um, with an Obi in such beautiful condition before. So, three. Three classics in a row from The Greater Sex. And let's keep that action going. Look at this. The Best of Nina Simone and Baltimore by Nina Simone. Both are hard cardboard gatefolds. 
This is a compilation of Nina Simone's kind of late 60s RCA um, output. Uh, only released in a few countries, Germany, USA, obviously Japan. This is a Japanese press. Uh, you can see the gatefold with the lyrics. Whilst the songs are in Japanese on the gatefold, um, the titles are in English on the record itself. And so you've got the likes of Here Comes the Sun, Mr. Bojangles, Do I Move You, and many more. A really nice compendium of the best of Nina's RCA period, which is somewhat, um, yeah, maybe the peak. Uh, uh, I guess some of her early pastel blues and those records are pretty great too. This is into the 70s on the CTI label. Um, Baltimore, also gatefold, beautiful condition with Obi, super hard to find. A record at the time that was somewhat misunderstood, but has become rather well regarded now. Um, it features some pretty amazing musicianship, and Nina herself is a very playful mood. Um... I've got a copy of this on my shelf and reach for it quite regularly. It's it's somewhat idiosyncratic, so give it give it a spin. But yeah, I love it very much. Um, now we've got a selection of range of different types of records. What about this? Sly and Robbie meets the Paragons, nineteen eighty one. Never had it with an Obi before. I didn't realize the Obi was was like that on uh, Compass Point Recordings, who who kind of specialised in um, that beautifully melodic reggae that became you know a little bit more ubiquitous in the early 80s. Um, I often look for that reggae that, that features Sly and Robbie or produced by Sly and Robbie because as a as a kind of as a deep you know the bass and the drums and, and that kind of rhythm section reggae they were the best they ever did it uh it's just a it's just a lot of fun it's a it's a you know <laughs> it's easy very easy listening and very playful all right we had a really good isaac hayes record last week chocolate chip um this one's just as good new horizon uh kind of Kate followed Chocolate Chip and um, it's a little bit more it's, it's a little bit harder funk but there are a couple of kind of bluesy slow bluesy numbers that I'm that I'm really fond of as well if you like Isaac Hayes this will just tick your boxes I, I promise now this one I've taken out the sleeve because I just I love this this gatefold, another hard cardboard gatefold. This is Lucky Seven by Bob James. Look at that ladybird. Seven spots, seven ladybirds. Lucky Seven is the name. And the clues in the title. It was his seventh record. And it features a long list of really quite special musicians, the likes of Eric Gale. Harvey Mason and Idris Muhammad on drums, who, as many of you might know, is, is somewhat of a hero of mine. So I really like Idris on this record. Um, one of the reasons that I want to pull this one out is it's a master sound recording. And there's a master sound recording in the classic rock list tonight as well. So it's got all the gear, which means that it was recorded on the highest quality vinyl that Japanese had. And they only pressed very limited numbers. So it's, to call it pristine sounding is doing it somewhat of a disjustice. It's pretty marvelous. 
Alrighty. Now we got we got something a little bit different. So this is Madame Claude, uh, an early eighties uh, French movie by Jules Chaclin. But you know, kind of a, the arty, sexy French style of that of that period. Uh, but part of the reason, well, in fact, the only reason I'm, fo I'm, I'm featuring it here is because it's effectively a Sir Gansborne record, and it also features Jane Birkin, um, who both came together on Histoire de Melanie Nelson, which I think is the greatest French rock album of all time. And, um, and so this is a very interesting listen. On the Phillips table... So, yeah, I know it's a little bit obs obscure, a little bit out there, but surprisingly, surprisingly good. Um, all right, we're about halfway through. What about this? Chances are Bob Marley. One of the harder to find Bob Marley records, mostly because it's a compilation of kind of unreleased records or songs that he, that he, that he, he recorded I think it's pretty predominantly mid to late seventies, um, and uh, you know, very very nice it is too. Quite nostalgic, which uh, you know, given what happened to Bob, is a nice way to feel about him. A uh, couple of really interesting ones coming up as well. I've had this one a while back. Um, the rather rather funny name, Ms. Lena's Boys, Wilson Pickett. Um, on the RCA label, does what it says in the tin, throaty, playful, full throttle jazz, not jazz, soul music. Um, yeah, I mean, Wilson Pickett, he's a legend for a reason. And this lady here is also a legend, but for very different reasons. And this is easily my favorite sleeve of tonight's selection. Oh, gosh, oh, I'll show you this in a second. It is pretty cool. This is Bessie Smith. The record's called The World's Greatest Blues Singer. Now, it is a double album on the CBS Sony label. And it also comes with this rather fine book that features photographs and lyrics and uh, all sorts about Bessie. Now, Bessie was maybe the most famous blues singer of the 30s and 40s. She had a huge following. And this double album pulls together everything that she did was great. Now, it has this in it, which I have not been able to figure out what that is. It's like, it, it looks like it's certi a certificate of purchase, but it's for 39,000 yen, which doesn't look quite right. And it's got, it's got serial numbers and all sorts. If anyone has any idea what that is, let me know. But it was in the gatefold. So there's some history attached to that, which I've not been able to suss out. Oh, and I love this. Look at the, look at the name of the book. The Empress of the Blues. What a wonderful thing. Now the next record is going to look very familiar because we had it just two weeks ago and I had such great feedback on the quality of this record that uh, when I saw it again, I picked it up. Duke Jordan, Flight to Denmark. Beautiful, mellow, melodic piano jazz. Really, really good. All right, a couple of classics to come, some of my favorites. So this is Al Green. Have a good time. This is actually a white label promo. So Have a good time was the last of the classic Al Green run of records made with uh, Willie Mitchell as producer on High Records. After this record, Al Green became much more reverend Al Green and his 
album took a turn into real you know, gospel and religious. I would have a good time as the last of those of that sold ones. I think it's about five or six records. So, you know, I'm still in love with you and my personal favorite, Call Me. But have a good time. Um, it's pretty great, and I haven't seen it in a while. It was promo before, so I think that'll find a good home. All right. <laughs> So what's coming are my favorite records of this list. Some of you in the past will have seen me wear a t-shirt of the JBs. <laughs> in fact, my t-shirt is of past the peas. This is Food for Thought. Um, I think this is the JB's debut record. Uh, it's absolutely freaking great. If you have not heard or explored the JBs. You, that means you haven't been round to any listening night at my place because I play them every time someone comes or any, anyone's visiting. The funkiest, most creative, most innovative and enjoyable band of the 70s. JBs named after James Brown. They were his backing band, featured musicians such as Macy o. Parker and Fred Wesley. It's just a trip. Uh, I, I can't remember whether I ever had this before. Um, maybe, maybe, but it's utterly wonderful. As is this on the classic Blue Trojan label. This is the Upsetters and Friends on Japanese vinyl. The Upsetters being one of the most iconic reggae bands of all time. And... Working with, you know, folks that really led the charge when it came to dub and uh, some of the more, uh, let's call it, drug-influenced avenues that, that reggae went down. Um, the Upsetters collection, Upsetters and Friends, does what it says in the tin. A collection of utterly wonderful reggae music. Um, yeah, very proud to have that on the list. Now let's finish off with oh you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say let's do some blues. Albert King. Sorry, Albert Collins, in fact. I, you'll see why I got confused with Albert King with what's coming. This is a Japan only compilation on the United Artists label of I from what I can piece together, I think it's a collection of the best of Albert Collins' first couple of records, but also some singles and things that didn't appear on those records. Um, yeah, beautiful, of course. The guitar tone is great. The voice, you know, you've got that kind of cabal at the time of Albert King, Albert Collins, Freddie King, B.B. Uh, King, all the Kings. Um, and this guy, Buddy Guy, this record's called Hold That Plane, recorded in, I think it was 69 or 70, although it took a couple of years for it to come out, um, in the aftermath of Buddy Guy's debut solo record, I Left My Blues in San Francisco, and this is very much cut from that same cloth, sweaty, funky blues, Really tight, almost claustrophobic, intense. You just want it to break. And the guitar solos are truly searing. Um, yeah, Albert Collins is a little bit different, a little bit more more um, circumspect, melodic, a bit more space, not as tense. So, yeah, I thought those two blues records were a nice contrast. And then this, Albert King Live. So... This record doubles as an essay on the history of the mighty Albert King. This is a double record, double, double LP, also a white label promo. Uh, as you might imagine, blistering guitar solos. And the reason I love this record, it features Albert, Co Albert King, not Albert Collins, Albert King, dueling with Rory Gallagher.
<laughs> For those of you in the know, you know how utterly wonderful that is, and it totally lives up to the hype. I'm going to finish out this list with maybe the one record on tonight's list that is a truly legendary, classic record, and it's this. Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. We all know what's going on. 1971 political commentary mixed with social conscience, mixed with the most velvety beautiful soul voice of maybe all time. And a production quality as lush and gorgeous as you might imagine. And then that got him, it was such a huge hit that he had complete autonomy. He could do whatever he wanted. And you know what happened? Sod's law, writer's block. Couldn't quite get himself together. And eventually found a way to write a record that is lustful and gorgeous and a different type of commentary. Talks about you know aspects of being an adult and having you know a life beyond the uh the typical and it, and it's yeah he's an extraordinary human being and to have those two records kind of team together it's quite something um and i'm really uh, of course on the tamil motown la label beautiful sleeve as well I thought it was a nice way to finish off tonight's soul, blues, jazz and reggae list. Hopefully something in there caught your eye. As always, love to get your feedback. Watch out for the list, 9 o'clock on Wednesday evening. And thank you for watching.